Bilahari comments on the Israel-Palestine dispute. Bilahari Kauskan, a former Singaporean diplomat and chairman of the Middle East Institute at NUS, described his perspective on the Israel-Palestine dispute. Sheikh Jarrah in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is sacred to all Abrahamic religions, with the old city having clearly defined the quarters for each of the Armenian, Christian, Jewish, and Muslim faiths. However, outside of the old city, the matter of who should control what land in Jerusalem is much less definite. Sheikh Jarrah is mainly Arab, with Jewish settlement in the area starting sometime in the early 1900s. During the Great Arab Revolt against the British, who had seized control of the region from the Ottoman Empire, Arabs took advantage of the chaos to wipe out the Jews living there and seize their properties. During the 1948 Israeli War of Independence later on, Jerusalem was divided between Jordan, who controlled East Jerusalem, and Israel, which controlled West Jerusalem. Between West and East Jerusalem was a no-man's land, a demilitarized zone, which included Sheikh Jarrah. During this time, formerly Arab properties in West Jerusalem were seized by Jews, while formerly Jewish properties in East Jerusalem were also seized by Arabs. Further complicating things, most of Sheikh Jarrah's original Arab population fled and were replaced by Arabs from elsewhere. Then, following Israeli victory in the Six-Day War, East Jerusalem was captured by Israel, uniting all of Jerusalem under de facto Israeli rule. Descendants of the Jews, who had lost their properties in the previous wars, with some dating back as far as the aforementioned Great Arab Revolt, demanded the return of their former land in Sheikh Jarrah. What makes this highly problematic is the fact that many of the current Arab residents were not the ones who had originally taken the land, and they view the land as theirs. Hence, due to the messy nature of past events, both Jewish and Arab claims may be valid and cannot be simply dismissed. Leaders not interested in peace The Palestinian Authority PA, which is Fatah in the West Bank, postponed the elections even before the Israeli-Palestinian dispute restarted, as Fatah would have lost to their rival Hamas if voting had actually taken place. The dispute took pressure off Fatah, as it helped to distract constituents from PA corruption and incompetence. Hamas, which won the 2006 Palestinian parliamentary elections against Fatah, and then fought them in the following civil war, seized control of Gaza. The dispute enabled Hamas to portray itself as the defenders of both Palestine and Jerusalem. Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, leader of the ruling right-wing party Likud in Israel, also abuses the dispute to garner electoral support. Therefore, all three main parties involved have no interest in finding long-lasting peace, as they would no longer be able to present one another as scapegoats to excuse their own failures. Arab real politic. Most Arab re nations in the region have, in recent years, warmed up to Israel and established official or unofficial ties with Israel. This dramatic shift in their attitude is possible because many Arab states did not genuinely care about the plight of the Palestinians and had only supported the issue to drum up domestic support or achieve foreign policy objectives. After all, the economic benefits of dealing pragmatically with Israel would vastly outweigh the usefulness of remaining mindlessly hostile towards them. Iran is the likely culprit. If anything, the one who would gain the most from the Palestinian issue is Iran. Iran has felt increasingly under threat due to the anti-Iran coalition being built by the US in the Middle East under the Abraham Accords, which brought together Israel and several formerly anti-Israel Arab states to oppose Iran. By using Iran-aligned Hamas to launch rockets at Israel, Iran hopes to dismantle the coalition against them. Due to decades of propaganda against Israel, many Arabs are more emotive over the Palestinian issue than their own governments do. Hence, forcing the Arab nations to condemn Israel so as to appease their people, even though it is not in their national interest to do so. Iran, of course, would also have a burning desire to seek vengeance for the numerous acts of sabotage and assassinations conducted by Israel on Iranian soil. What Singapore's stance should be 
The Palestinian issue is in truth a matter of politics and nationalism, and it does not have anything to do with religion. As such, Singapore has no vested interest in involving itself in the matter and should avoid being dragged into it. Lee Kuan Yew once remarked that Singapore had learned two things from Israel. One was the means to become strong, and another was not how not to use that strength. Instead of what Israel is doing, Lee remarked that Singapore had realized that we should use our strength to get along with our neighbors and not live in perpetual conflict. We must also never forget that Israel assisted us in building the Singapore Armed Forces when no one else wanted to do so. Furthermore, because Singapore also faces some similar threats as Israel does, such as terrorists who wanted to attack us with rockets like those in Batam, the principle of the right to self-defense must never be compromised.